Hello friends, Patrick here again. This is um, the second video in the book review of Doing It Afraid, um, Not Afraid to Be Afraid by Gord Martin. Again, I think the title would be, you know, um, adjusted. I'll make some notes in, in the video review of what I think might, might be a, 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 a better title, but that's just my personal opinion. This is a great, a great, great read for anybody who is uh, studying to go into the ministry or planning to to serve uh, the Lord in, in Christian work or Christian ministry of any kind. And um, it's very uh, insightful and inspiring in that regard. Um, that being said, I, I have to, you know, mention that um, it is something um, remarkable that... Um, uh, Gord Martin and his wife have been so um, um, dedicated to promoting Christian community, Christian fellowship, the growth of the of the Christian community in the region, and it's quite remarkable the effect that they've had on hundreds and hundreds of lives, thousands of lives, in and around the region and around the world because of the work that they've done overseas in Ecuador and other places, as they mentioned in the, um, in the book. So a great read, highly recommend it. Um, that being said, keep in mind that for the plebs, for the down and outers, for the people for whom ministry is not an option, um, there needs to be an understanding that the Christian faith is a faith based on the individual. There has been always fragmentation in the Christian body as a whole between Catholics and Protestants, between Gnostics and Apostolic, between Lutheran, Presbyterian, take your pick of denomination that's fragmented. And it's no different in the Brethren community. There's groups that were uh, um, adamantly independent and didn't want to be part of any kind of organizational structure, as Gord mentions in the book. And then there were others that were more open to forming an umbrella group. And what was the purpose of this umbrella group? You can see that the influence, as mentioned, is from the Purpose Driven Church by Rick Warren. If you read the book, uh, Purpose Driven Life, it sold gazillions of copies and reached thousands and millions of people around the world. He also wrote a book called The Purpose Driven Church, in which he talks about his vision for building his church in California, which was hugely successful. And he had a, uh, a uh, template or a prototype where he would have core Christians in the center, and each concentric ring was individuals that were more and more distant from being wholeheartedly giving themselves over to the service of the Christian church, in, in, in Rick Warren's case, his, his church, and it's similar in the local Christian community. Um, it's this shotgun approach, and, and these core um, Christian leaders are what are valued and are what help to build this Christian community center, which is really what it is. It is, it is a community center of services that is able to address multiple needs in the community, which brings in more people and it becomes a snowballing effect. And as this uh, group mushrooms in size, the resources that are collected are able to fund more and more salaries. And that's where the funding goes. They have tax exempt status. So the government likes that. They collect money tax free. They use that money to hire more and more staff. So if you look at the churches in the area of today, um, they collect, you know, a large amount of resources. And the more resources they collect, the more staff they hire. So it becomes a self-building, community-based outreach with a gospel message on the tail end, so to speak. 
the, the main focus is, of course, community outreach and help and to, to bless the community, which is a great thing, and to expand the, the kingdom of God, which is a great thing. However, that being said, in today's environment, we should back up and take a broader view of what is going on in the world today, in that the churches tip their hand with the latest government overreach that occurred and shut down all these churches and all the churches had no no desire to 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 stand up they had no strength save for a small number perhaps half a dozen that were willing to say no we're not we're not following they followed the the first testament the uh, new testament sorry example where they said whether we should obey god or obey you we're not going to stop preaching the gospel and those were the the churches that showed their true colors and most of those churches were run by essentially independent radicals who didn't adhere to any type of organizational structure or any type of group that told them well no you know you have to obey the authorities in power and we don't mention anything about politics this is the problem that is facing the Christian church today is that there is no mention of telling the membership to get out and vote when we only have 30% of the population voting and even then the votes themselves are essentially uh, e elections uh, you know you can call them elections they're selections they're not elections they're elected by the corporate elite the corporatocracy which supports the idea of a return to feudalism right the purpose of the elites that are controlling the nation states of the world they want to return to feudalism so they can have a, a perfect elite society which enjoys all the pleasures of art and and the high society living and so on and so forth and the rest of the world is kept in peasantry and kept in servitude to benefit the corporate interests and to keep buying refrigerators and stoves and cars and so on and so forth. And so that is the way that the world is going. And anything that gets in the way of that is brushed aside, including the Christian church. Now, if there is alternative religions that are willing to support the incumbent, willing to support the uh, current politicos that are in power, they will get favored treatment as we're seeing that is happening today they will get members within parliament that will represent their interests and that's something that the christian church has woefully not tried to address they've never tried to lobby the canadian government they've just kept silent right there is apparently uh christian organizations such as you know uh, evangelical fellowship of canada or you know, Vision Ministries Canada, or so on and so forth, a number of organizations, Brian Stiller, for example, is mentioned in the book and so on. They have zero influence on Canadian politics. In fact, the Christian Church in Canada today is being um, downgraded, is being, again, we have a prime minister who is anti-Christian, right? He confesses to be a nominal Catholic, um, but his actions and attitudes are essentially to promote the destruction of the Christian church and instead promote a different religion that he finds more favorable, probably because they lobby his party, right? You can do your own research on that. That's just on a superficial examination of the current state of affairs within our country. And it's probably quite obvious to see that that is the case. If I am incorrect in that assumption, I'd be happy to hear feedback from anybody that feels differently. And so this is something, in spite of all the wonderful work that he has done, you know, affected and influenced the lives of thousands and thousands of people, the, the one person that is able to influence the prime minister of the country to turn his heart back to truth will have done more than, than 10 lifetimes of people like Rick Warren and, and, and Gord Martin, God bless them. They've done more than I will ever be able to do uh, in promoting the kingdom of God, perhaps.
perhaps not if the Lord keeps me around for another amount of years that I could work as hard as he could, highly unlikely. But I will do my part to stand up and say, we need truth in this country. Yes, he goes into detail about welcoming the immigrants into the country, which is very, very important that we do. That we accept everybody of all backgrounds, of all faiths, of all religions. I wholeheartedly agree with that. And yet at the same time, we have to be aware of a Pollyanna attitude. If we're bringing in a half a million people a year, what about if we brought in 100 or 200,000 that we would better be able to service uh, while addressing the needs of domestic problems at the same time to allow for a uh, such an accelerated number? We have to be honest with ourselves and saying, is that going to be absorbable, especially in the city centers? I don't know. It's, it's, it's worth discussing. It's worth debating. And so the uh, policies of the church uh, in Canada today are um, great for community service and, and community programs. Um, there's no doubt about that. But I would be remiss if I didn't speak from the perspective of a plan of a person that will never be accepted in uh, ministry of any kind simply because of not having the correct background and not having the correct speech and not having the correct education. Unless you're the son or daughter of a pastor, there is no opportunity for Christian ministry uh, leadership in Canada. You have to have gone to the right Bible college, you have to have come from the right family, you have to speak the right language, and so on and so forth. And so for the vast majority of Christians in uh, Canada, it is a nominal faith because the programs are there, the facilities are there. You go and you meet and you, you're, you're, you're going to a community social club. But as far as information, doctrine, revelation knowledge that allows the individual to understand that God cares about each and every individual. It's not just a corporate community club that keeps growing and growing and getting bigger and bigger and bigger, drawing in more and more people. And that's a wonderful community service. I, I, I can't knock it. That's a wonderful, wonderful community service that the Christian church is very good at and has improved under people like Gordon Martin, God bless him, who has done, who has dedicated his life to promoting the kingdom of God. I would never say a word against such uh, a person or such activity. That is fantastic. However, the individual that is alone, is struggling, will never have the hundreds and thousands of friends that these people have had, that they get all this adoration from the, from the, from the plebs. The individual that is struggling that's alone and doesn't know that God is right there beside them within their heart and mind waiting to rescue them and loving and caring for them so much. If they could get a taste of that somehow, that would be so powerful that they would want to stand up for truth at all costs from that day forward. A genuine revelation, born again experience. Yes, there's a born again experience of saying the sinner's prayer and, and, and going that, but don't forget where that leads. That leads to massive growth in the church and then you get the recycling program of the MacArthur's who say, oh, Christians are not real Christians. They're not really saved. See, Christians believe, but they don't have the power. And so they are taken advantage of by the laity. The laity continually tells them, you're not good enough. You're not good enough for God. You're probably not really saved. And any argument against that, it becomes self-devouring. It becomes no different than left-wing ideology. It says, oh, unless you're anti-racist, you're not anti-racist enough, then you're racist. You're not Christian enough, then you're apostate. This is what we have to be very, very careful about. The self-devouring doctrine that pervades many different ideologies. The only solution to that is the individual relationship to God Almighty. Theism that says, yes, God loves me. He proved it to me. Not to put God to the test, not to search for signs and wonders and miracles, but to experience one's own 
miracle of life on a daily basis. This is possible. How is that communicatable? I don't have the answer to that question. I know that I've experienced it myself personally, but I'm hoping that that will grow because that is what will last and that is what will transform an individual from promoting the, 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 the wokest culture that exists today. See, today you cannot get a job for the government of Canada as a Christian. You might if you hide your religion. You cannot get a job in a Canadian library as a Christian. You cannot get a job on a Canadian school board as a Christian. Those uh, jobs are all closed off from anybody that acknowledges God as supreme, that acknowledges God as the creator of the universe. Those opportunities and jobs are only open to people that will subscribe to a totalitarian communist mindset. Correct me if I'm wrong. But this is what we're facing. This is what we're up against. We're up against something that is far larger than just having a, a great community center and having great programs. Those are all wonderful things. But we must not lose sight of the larger picture, which is the, the spiritual forces that's ruling and guiding the earth in dark areas and dark places. We need to have leadership at the highest level acknowledge that God is sovereign that we are dependent upon God for our life it's not a matter of elitism that thinks they can reduce the population of the earth down to what it was 500 years ago as Jane Goodall came out and spoke recently and said oh the, all the problems of the world is that there's too much people there's not too much people there's not enough people that acknowledge God that is the problem in the earth today we need more people to acknowledge that we are dependent upon God for the resources of this planet and the resources of where we may have to go in outer space if we need more room or build, start building vertically. We haven't even scratched the surface of how many people can live on this planet. We have seven or eight billion people. We could easily have a hundred billion people. But nobody wants to acknowledge that because they say, oh, no, that's impossible. You know, we have to go back down to a billion people. Well, if we're at seven or eight billion people and they want to get it back down to a billion people, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be dark times if that if that agenda gets fulfilled. And this is what we're up against. We're up against global agenda, which is anti-Christian, which is anti-God, which is anti-revelation. Right. We need to grasp a hold of the brotherhood of theism in all the major religions. Hinduism, Islam, Judaism, Christianity. We are all trying to contact the same Heavenly Father and say, Oh God, have mercy on us. Help us to see clearly how much you love us. Help us to see clearly how we can be a, a true neighbor to our to our fellow man, whether in our own country or internationally, whether with, with our, uh, our friends from our own neighborhood or from people that have just arrived into the country, as mentioned in his book, that we reach out and help those around us. Very, very valuable teaching to reach out to everybody that we can in love and sympathy. I hope that, pardon me, I hope that makes sense and I hope I haven't been too harsh um, in covering my review of this book. It is, as I said, an inspiration for a younger person, a person just planning to enter the ministry is ideal. But for older people that have been through the grinder, older people that have uh, suffered through things like divorce, drug addiction, alcoholism, so on and so forth, and uh, health issues, there needs to be a reminder that Christianity is a Christianity of the individual. There are as many unique faiths as there are individuals on the planet, and each person will need to relate to God in their own individual lives. This is a message that people need to hear. It's not a community club, a corporate, you know, target, unless you're in the center, you're nobody. This, this, this book written by Rick Warren is, is repulsive. That type of teaching is, is repulsive from a standpoint of the individual faith that is needed to rescue a person from misery. 
And so keep that in mind. Yes, community programs are great. Corporate structure is great. Corporate body of Christ is great. But don't forget, the kingdom of God is in within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Look inside your heart. Ask God to reveal himself to you and show you the miracles that can happen in your life each and every day. Each and every day is a miracle gift from God to you. How are you going to use that day? Use it to advance his kingdom. Use it to his glory. And to glorify God, is he's happy to give you the kingdom. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be full of joy. He wants you to have overcoming life of victory over death, misery, destruction, failure. He wants you to overcome that. God is on your side. It is a faith of the individual. So look inside your heart. The kingdom of God is within you as Christ reminded us. Remember that. Thank you for watching. God bless you. I hope you have a fantastic day. God loves you very much. Take care of yourself. Sorry I went a bit over time. We'll talk to you soon, okay? Bye-bye now. Take care. Bye-bye.